Hopeful Gospel Family Church, we are fulfilling the Great Commission. Go ye into all the world and make disciples. Anyone who would like to come and join us on our missions, you are invited. Anyone who would like to give financially, you can use the information you see below. Also, I just want to say thank you for your support in advance. God thank bless. you for the promises in your son, which are yea and amen in Christ, that we would prosper, we would make our way, Lord God, <clears throat> Sufficient in you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. We thank you for the health, the resurrection, the peace, the joy, the chastisement that is in this book. We thank you as we hide it in our hearts that we sin not against you. We guard these hearts, Lord God, because out of our hearts are the issues of life. You said those that find this word find health into their flesh and they find life. So thank you for the book of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. A couple scripture references won't be before you long. Amen. The sergeant is in the house. Praise God. Amen. So we're going to look over at uh, James 5, 17. Also James 4, 8. And we'll be looking at uh, Luke 18. And First Kings 19, and also Psalms 35. And it won't be before you long, and we'll probably get to maybe John 8. Praise God. How's everybody? Amen. This is the rain crew. God usually does something really nice when it's raining. Amen. Praise God. Okay, let's go over to, um, let's start at, um, we're going to continue with the prophetic ministry of Elisha walking in the office of the prophet, not just prophesying, but bringing forth comfort, anointing kings, priests, doing signs, wonders, and miracles. Praise God and know that these things are still available today. I was talking to one pastor once. He said that no longer is there any prophets and no longer are there any miracles. And I asked him, I said, when's the last time you read your Bible? <laughs> Amen. You have to read your Bible. Someone told me that. In the New Testament, there was no evidence of angels. Again, when's the last time you read your Bible? Amen. <laughs> Glory be to God. Let's go over to um, James 5. James 5. And what I want you to see is the men and women of God are human they are called by God, and remember the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. What's that mean? What's that mean? What God has ordained you to do and gifted you with has nothing to do with what you do with it or what you've done to earn it. Both? Hmm. Okay. All right. Who has earned their anointing and their calling? Nobody. Who has earned it? Nobody. Nobody. Amen. Now, we often say that the anointing costs you everything. Everything. What are some of those everythings? Your ego, your pride. Your reputation, your way. friends, family, your money, money your, will. your will, time, your time, your treasure, right, and your talents. So it costs you something. Amen. Now sometimes you're not willing to pay. <laughs> 
Sometimes you don't want to pay. You want to play. Anybody have been there? Yes. Well, I know this is the church out there overly sanctified. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Sometimes you just don't want to pay. And sometimes you just get enough. You just don't want to go any further. Doesn't mean that you don't love God. Does it? It means that you just might be tired. Anybody been tired? Amen. And when you're tired, what should you do? Rest. Rest. Okay. Well, rest. Now, let's talk about a rest. There's a natural rest. There's a spiritual rest. And you really can't have full rest in the natural until you have the rest in the spirit. I love somebody. Amen. Because the flesh and the and the spirit, they're contrary one to another. They war against one another. And you know, warring all the time and fighting and going through can make you tired. Anybody ever been tired? Nobody's been tired. Anymore. Amen. So what are some of the things you might have been tired about? Anybody ever get tired of praying? I'm just tired of, I'm tired of, I'm tired of praying. I'm tired of going to church. I'm tired of tithing. I'm tired of being tired. That's where you get some rest. <laughs> I love somebody. Now, I'm trying to keep it practical so that we can make it tactical. And we'll be able to fight the good fight of faith. Now, when you're fighting a battle that you know nothing about, haven't been trained for, and it's not your battle, you're going to get tired real fast. And many of the things that we are fighting and trying to handle is not really our responsibility. And many times they've already been handled, but we don't have faith to know that God has already handled this before the foundation of the world. And you didn't have to wake him up and say, oh, oh look what happened. Da, 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 da. Now we must throw these people out. Hello, somebody? Where sin does abound, what happened prior to that? What was the precept to that? Where sin does abound, grace, grace does abound what? Much more. Much more. Shall we continue to sin? No, God forbid. No. Amen. But even if God forbid, you're going to miss the point sometime. Hello, somebody? Now, the thing is, like, yo, I missed it. I blew it. I didn't catch it. Okay? The, the past was a Hail Mary, and I forgot. The Hail Mary, because I didn't do my penance at the altar. I didn't say 5,000 our fathers. So therefore, I missed the Hail Mary. Sometimes you're going to miss it. Amen? And you missing it, does it make your position with God null and void? Because you miss it. Does it? Hmm? No. Okay, so what does it make you? Human. Human makes you a little flesh creature. Okay? It's a little flesh creature. And you can be tired sometimes and don't even know it. Hello, somebody? Tell me some of the problems associated with sleep deprivation. Disillusion. It hits all organ systems. Bad decision making, overeating, undereating. Okay. What's that? Get grumpy, quick tempered, right? And we have a mnemonic here, right, or an acronym, right, which is HALT. Don't make any major decisions or do anything when you are hungry, angry, lonely and tired. Amen? Those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with their wings like an eagle. They shall be able to run and what? 
Not be weary and walk in what? Not faint. So a lot of times, that times when you are waiting on the Lord, now not waiting on what you think is going to happen, but just waiting on God to move. Yes, yes, yes. Just waiting, okay? Now, you know, waiting can be a problem. You come to my offices and waiting is a problem. Now, I'm going to say this. When my clients go to other doctor's office that don't look like me and my staff, they have no trouble waiting. I love somebody. Then when my clients who don't look like me come to my office, they sit and they wait. It's a good time to pray and bless God. So what is the problem? It's honoring whom you're waiting for. You're honoring who you're waiting for. Because you can handle it two different ways. And we offer, like, if you're waiting too long, we don't want you to wait, so therefore we will ask you to leave your phone number, we'll call you back at a better time, you can reschedule, you can do something. Not getting an attitude problem, okay? Because an attitude, okay, will cause you to descend. All right? Below the best altitude, amen, to receive the smooth path. I love somebody. Now, many times we have issues, say, with our children or with our spouses, and you pray on it, and da 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 da, and you're still praying, and you're still praying, and you're still praying, and you're still praying. Well, why are you still praying if you believe God heard you, according to John 5? That when you prayed according to his will, he what? Heard you. And if he heard you, then he's going to give you desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I, you should have what? Peace while you're waiting. Yes. Have joy while you're waiting. Amen? Yes. And that's the song that said, that's why I... Well, wait, wait a minute now. That's not why I wait. But I choose to wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Anybody can go somewhere where the plane you, uh, the plane doesn't come in on time or they canceled the flight hmm? or it's bad weather and you can't walk. You can't run. There's no bus. There's no lift. There's no Uber. Amen. There's no hack. So you got to sit down, Jack, and do what? Wait. Glory be to God. Oh, now, I don't know, I'm trying to go somewhere with this, okay? And the Lord is saying that there's going to be situations where you're going to just have to wait and have peace while you're waiting, have joy while you're waiting, but continue to wait. Hello? Anybody ever uh, wait for a bus? You wait too long and you decide to walk? And then the bus comes and then what the bus? Pass me by, don't pass me by, oh gentle Savior. Amen. So this is a word that God, listen, I really don't have a whole, whole lot to do with this. But the Lord is saying, just wait on the Lord. But enter, but, but you have to have peace as you go through this long suffering. Amen. Things are getting better. See, it's your perspective. You don't have to see it because the things seen, what, are not what? The things that are not seen are eternal. Things seen are temporal. We're so caught up on what we see. But in order to walk by faith, you walk by faith and not by sight. Because faith is what? The substance of things hoped for with the evidence of things not seen. So how can you have evidence when it's not seen? It's not seen, but it's heard. Listen to me, it's heard. Because faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you have to take the word, mix it with faith in your spirit. So therefore, in your spirit, that's where you're going to get the rest. 
Well, I don't choose to fight. I don't choose to run. I don't choose. I just choose to be patient. As Je we were talking about Jehoshaphat um, Wednesday night in our Bible study, and Jehoshaphat had a situation, okay, where he was attacked on three sides, three enemies, and he, he could not beat them. He decided to fast. He decided to pray. And the prophet said, the battle is not yours. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. You will not have to fight. Listen to me. I'm talking to somebody. You don't have to fight because it's already been handled. The victory, the complete work, the triumphant work, done at Calvary, come on, made an open show of all principalities and powers once and forever. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you got the victory. Amen. Well, Bishop, well, that don't seem like I got the victory. But let me tell you something. Stop looking at me and look to the hills from which cometh my help. See, where you got your eyes on, okay? See, man is going to fail God. And if he's going to fail God, guess who you think you are? The next person they're going to fail. Anybody, anybody catch on? Now, we're looking at a very, very mighty prophet. Okay? I mean, a kick behind prophet. Okay? Kick behind. Okay? Now, what I like about these prophets in the Old Testament, these boys carry blades. They carry blades. Samuel took a a a gang, and what did he do with a gang? He did what? Came up in pieces, man. You wouldn't think Samuel was like that. Samuel was trying to figure it out, like, Lord, did you speak to me? Da 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 da. And Samuel pulled out his blade. Okay. What did Elijah do with the prophets of Baal? And it was about four or five hundred of them. Say, neighbor, four or five hundred of them. He pulled out his blade. He pulled out his sword. Now, what can we pull out? The word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. Oh, listen to me. And when you begin to put that word attacked with, I mean, associated with faith, it's an attack, a strategic attack. Mix it with praise and worship. You go all into the enemy's encampment. And tear it to pieces at the spirit. Because it's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Say, but. Now, this is a gospel but. It's not the but you get in Miami. It's not the but you get in the New York. It's not the but you get in Dominican Republic. Okay? All right? It's not an Overeaters Anonymous but. It's a God kind of but. Hello? But God. But God. But sometimes you need the less. I just sense some people are just fighting too hard. A battle that you don't can't fight. You done, haven't done all. Haven't done all. In that evil day, haven't done all. Do what? Stand in the power of his mind. Put on the whole armor of God. And have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Because your loins are girded about with what? The truth. And what did Jesus say was the truth? The word. The word sanctifies you. Sets you apart from worrying and not worrying. Having an argument. Like, arguments are crazy. Because after the first minute, the person ain't going to try to agree with you. You know what's like, like, okay. Okay. Next. Yeah. Or maybe next time. Or maybe never. <laughs> okay. Amen. But it's a rest. Amen. Now, when we see Elisha, Elisha went through a whole lot. Do you know, or maybe you don't know, could you imagine what he was going through and the spiritual mitigation and revelation he had to enter into to trust God that day that the call down fire after he put water over it 
dug a trench around it. I mean, he had to be, full. he had to have given what? His all to trust in God. Don't you think sometimes after that you might be a little tired, a little weary? Hello? Let's look at the gospel and see what, what the word of God says, and you know it very well. In five, in James five, Elisha seventeen was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. And then he goes against Jezebel's prophets. Don't you think you get tired? Now, what I'm looking at here, and I don't see with Elisha, that I, with Elijah, that I see with Elisha. The prophet, the apostle, the pastor, the evangelist needs somebody to help them in the spirit with intercession and prayer. It's very, very important because you're going to have a weak season. Now, <laughs> When you need to rest, you need to go to bed. I try to go to bed as early as I can. Okay, because I need a lot of spiritual energy and physical energy when I step into the office. Hello? And when I have to pray for my staff, because I don't know how they do it. The front, I don't know how they do it. They have an anointing. I mean, like, I would be in jail. I would be dead. Somebody else would be dead. I lost my life and I lost my mind. I don't know how they do it. Amen? Amen. I just don't. Amen? But I know something. All of them are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost and have a ministry of casting their cares on the Lord and letting the Lord sustain them. But I can see sometimes when they come out of the spirit because they get tired and they get in the flesh. I'm trying to show, show you something. There's times where you'll leave the spirit because you're tired of it. You're going to try to handle it in the flesh. Amen? There's no good thing that dwelleth in the flesh. To live carnally minded is unto death. That's deprivation. To live according to the spirit is everlasting life. Amen? Okay, let's go over to 19. Just trying to give you a little background so you can hear this. And I see, I see and hear a lot of times where the man or woman of God is not covered. They're condemned rather than being covered in prayer and fasting. Hello. Okay. Now, if a person is scarcely saved, going through something, everybody wants to cover. That's a light affliction. But you start feeding nations the word of God, feeding them food, raising the dead, opening blind eyes. Come on, somebody. Taking people who are not a people, teaching them the gospel, and let them know that they're peculiar people, praising the Lord, feeding them, giving them opportunities. What kind of attack and bombardment do you think they have upon them? Hello. But who's well, look at it this way. Jesus had twelve disciples. How many were at the cross? One. One. Hello? One. And when he had the most difficult night in his life at Gethsemane, who stayed up and prayed for him and with him? What would you have done had you been there with him? Well, I would have prayed with him. Yeah, man, that's how I roll. Oh. <laughs> and every once in a while, you got to know that you're the lion joker. Because you can't even get to prayer night.
because of this and because of that. Because of this and because of that. Because you know the real reason? Because you don't think prayer is all that. Corporate prayer is all that. I'm going to tell the whole truth to help you God. I don't need to come up here and start lying. Prayer ain't that important. I can make it. I pray at home, Jen. I'm praying on. I'm tired. It don't mean all that. <laughs> Why don't they have it on Tuesday night rather than Monday night? Da -da 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 -da. But that very time is the time of intercession where the God comes in and empowers this in the spirit. So therefore, that the, the people, and we're praying internationally, we're praying universally, okay? For the apostle, for the prophet, for the pastor, for the teacher. And guess what? He did this, he did that. Maybe if you'd have prayed a little bit, rather than criticizing, and when you have the same situation, you're going to run back to the pastor, or to your dumb girlfriend, or to your dumb roadie, that don't pray. <laughs> Hello. Glory be to God. And wait for Tracy to come in and try to put him out. Tracy and Frank. They represent the fruit, precious fruit of the earth. If you can't deal with them, you can't deal with the masses. You can't deal with the endemic charge and the endemic filtration, that's, that, uh, 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 a penetration that comes against the people of the man or woman of God. You don't know nothing. Now, had... Jesus Rhodes prayed for them, prayed for him at the Garden of Gethsemane. Would it have changed anything? Hmm? It would have still had to go. But wouldn't it have been nice? You go on to the worst part of your life, and somebody said, man, I got you. I'm praying yes. with you. Yes. I'm standing with you. Mm -hmm. How about both Shanta? Okay, but they were asleep. How many people have overslept, been up all night packing to go on vacation, and oh, get tired, and don't make the flight? Why do you make the flight when you're tired? Because what? People are where they want to be, doing what they want to do, when they want to do it, every time they want to do it, and be right there. Hello? I'm going to tell you something. Can I tell you something? Since we're going into the mind thing, you know, the emotion, right? So one of my patients called me. She said, man, I never knew Elijah was this and that and the other. She said, but what does it have to, this person don't go to church, right? But they God fear them, they don't, they don't know church. She said, well, what does it have to do with a girl that comes in with a skirt, a high skirt? What happened then? You, you did all right, but what do you, what do you mean when you talk about the girl with the, with the, comes in with a short skirt? And then she's going to take somebody, and say, what, what is that? That, that? that really goes on? <laughs> I said, baby. <laughs> yes. But oh, what does that mean? She said, nobody can take nobody from anybody. I said, you're right. You can't take them. You can't take them. They decide they want to go where they want to go. When's the last time Mexico took you? When's the last time uh, Vegas took you? Come on, when's the last time the, shop, the, the Royal Grove Mall took you. You decided you want to do what? Go. You know your credit card is extended. You only got a couple of dollars in your pocket, but you still going to what? Go because you like it. 
Hello. Okay, you're going to cut me off on this message. Okay? So guess what? Elijah got tired. He started to run. He had had enough. Anybody ever get enough? When you get enough, there is no, it's never objective as much as, as it is subjective. Because somebody else can do the whole thing, or at one time or another, that was the, the, the bombardment or the preponderance of these things didn't matter. But one day, like, man, you get, they, something hits your weak spot. I ain't got no weak spot. I've been on the hopeful guy in the family church, man. Yo, I sit here all day. Your pride, your haughtiness, your cares of the world, deceitfulness of riches. Decide to choke that word, and you're going to gasp from air, for air, somewhere. Listen to me. This is the human frailty, and that's the reason the Lord had me to start there. A man of like passions. Okay? And as I walk in this situation, I remember many years ago, I was not going to Africa or no place else to do ministry. That was my passion, not to go. But I started praying, I started fasting, and guess what? It's who I am. Hello? And I don't get tired as of yet. Hello, somebody, some things I might get tired of or might not like, but I've learned to pray through. And I've learned that in the division of prayer, the prayer of thanksgiving, and adoration and praise will take you to another place when you're tired, when you don't quite understand. The praises go up, what? Well, and the blessings come down. I told her, I can go back to the airplane. How many people go in the air? Say, oh man, the flight leaves at 10.30. And at 10.30, you're trying to knock on the door. They will lock you up, okay? Put you in jail for a thousand years under the Patriot, Patriot, Patriot Act. But you're knocking on the door because guess what? You want to get in. Keep coming up, but we'll see, see, praise and worship and prayer. You want to get into the Holy of Holies and fellowship with God. Hello, somebody? I woke up this morning with my... Mind stayed on Jesus. So it's about what's going on in your mind. And sometimes you can lose your mind and not be crazy. You just lost your mind. Okay. All right. But let me tell you something. Let's go over to um, 1 Kings 19. Before you go there, put your finger over in um, Hebrews 13. Uh, what does it mean if you continually always are late for service? Oh, continually late for service. staff, front desk staff, they missed you. They did good. They did good. It was one day, like, I've never seen so many people in the office in 41 years. Okay? They did good. They come to help you, right? But they're always late. What would you do? What would you think? Now that's the didactic, empirical approach. But what's 
was the real thing. Okay, people. I'm trying to help you. What you say? That's your sister. What you say? They ain't trying to help you. You carpenter, right? You have apprentice work with you and helpers and all those things, right? And you have a job, right? So you need them for various ways. I need them too. It makes my job flow easier. Make the job flow easier, right? Okay. Praise God. And if they don't show up and don't come, they'll come back all the time. In perfect is really not all the time. We met about one time at the end of the way. Why isn't the church? Why isn't the church like everything just goes? Because of Jesus. As of Jesus, I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. No, what influences them, them to not come? Laziness, but they ain't trying to help you. See, guess what? As mighty as God is, he doesn't have a body, okay, except us. He don't have a body except us. We are the body of Christ. You are the church. You are the ecclesia. Okay? You are the church. So sometimes you got to get somebody that really cares about this thing. Okay? And then they can put their best foot forward. Okay? Because we need the time and the treasure, amen, to make and the talent. Okay? You're only going to give your talent to what you want. You understand what I'm saying? Amen? Praise God. So, Elisha had to handle this himself. Right? But let me tell you how God handles this, this, these situations. Go over to 13, 5. Because we will discredit in a minute. Kick out in a minute. Okay? But in 13, 5, what does 13, 5 say of Hebrews? So God's not leaving or forsaking, is he? Okay. Go over to James 4, verse 8. Draw nigh to God. And he will draw an eye to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your heart, ye double minded. Okay. So it looks like our relationship with God is as much as we want it. Doesn't it look like that? Okay. So what the Holy Ghost is saying, how much of this thing do you want? I will only, okay, allow you to have what you want. Because I will not impose my will upon you. Hello? What is the percentage of the church or the congregants in the church that do the work? Real work? Five to ten percent. Five to ten percent. Five to ten percent. Lord have mercy. Glory be to God. So guess what? Elijah was one of the 10%. Ain't that many real prophets? Real apostles? Somebody ought to help me. Because when you see the real prophet, the real prophet, you judge them by their fruit, not by their weaknesses. Okay? No man by what? By the flesh. 
Touch not thine anointing, anointing and do thy prophets no harm. Amen. Praise God. So our calling is to intercede and pray and help. Amen. The only help that Elijah was getting was he had to get to God. But God kept him. He fed him. He had who? Who fed him on his journey? The angels. Now you notice there was no people involved in his, 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 I, I call it elevation. There was nobody involved. Right? Well, one person was involved. Hmm? Why? Why? There was nobody involved. It was just him and whom? The angels. And the angels fed him. He went to sleep. God woke him up. So the angel to feed him. He said, because the journey you have, okay, you need some nourishment. All right? And he was resting. Amen? Go over to 91 of Psalms. And when you're resting and when you're on the run, God said, I'm right there. Wherever you go, I'm with you. I'm still talking to you. I'm in your head. I'm in your body. I'm in your spirit. I'm all up in you because you are mine. I have not kicked you out. I have not thrown you away. Because... You are my church. You are my apostle. You are my prophet. You are my pastor. You are my evangelist. You are my psalmist. What kind of prayer life, what kind of sacrifice do you think Elijah may have had to go through to be able to have a day like that to handle 400, I forget the number, all those prophets. And kill them all. He must have been praying up a storm. He must have been fasting. See, you don't know the life and what's required for someone to do the work that they do. I hear our youth pastor, how she goes in for the youth. I mean, she goes in. But she also has a son. She can say, well, I ain't praying for nobody. I'm just going to pray for my son and nobody else. So you don't know the sacrifice there. I love somebody. You don't know the labor of love. So the Lord says, stop judging my anointing and do them no harm. Oh, my, my, my. What did I tell you to come? Psalm 91. Now, remember over in the chapel, I told you that that secret place of the Most High, and we decided to give it a definition. What was that definition we gave? Place for you and God and nobody else and it's not your business. You can't get in there to mess it up. It's between you and God and nobody else's business. Amen? All right? Because you don't know what God is saying to them. If you were getting there, you start telling them, da 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 Don't drink orange juice or don't drink uh, grape juice or don't drink wine or don't do this and don't do that. The thing you should tell them is that don't take your mind off of the redemptive work of Jesus Christ because it is sufficient, because his grace is sufficient. Hello. Hello. Did God tell Elisha that he was finished with him? Hmm? No. But he told Saul that he was finished with him. Mm -hmm. Hello. Different destiny. Okay. Go over to um, First Kings. Almost done. First Kings 19. And we're going to go to thirteen. Thirteen. So God wanted him in that secret place. 
Is it conceivable that the prophet may have been tired? He may have been shook. Uh, he just killed 300. Uh, what is the exact? I forget the exact number. But Jezebel was only one person. If he was able to kill 300 somebody, probably should be able to handle Jezebel, right? There's a place. There's a place sometimes where you don't understand the formability of the spirit that you have working in it. Hello? Amen? Okay, we're going to go to 13. All right, in the preceding uh, verse, it says a small, I'm sorry, a still, small voice. So he had to hear something. It was a still, small voice. What is required to hear something that is real still and real small rather than something that's very high amplitude? What's the requirement? Concentration. And another word, focus. I want to use the word being attentive. Being attentive, right? And Jesus says in Revelation that he who has an ear hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. He that has an ear. What's that mean, he that has an ear? What's that mean? He that wants to hear. Okay? Rather than watch the clock and see what time church is over. You understand what I'm saying? You want to hear this. But you know something about God? He will continue to tell you this until the day of Jesus Christ. Any teachers in here? People that teach? Teachers? What are some of the things you do when you're teaching? You're teaching a new topic. Especially in something like a wiki, I mean, a mathematics or science or whatever. Example. Put your phones away. Okay. When I was teaching, they didn't have phones. Okay. They were all out the window. <laughs> Full attention. teacher. I say, you got skills. Uh, I'm looking for something. You know what you have to do? You have to review what you had taught before. So remember we did in a meeting? I didn't want to go any place until we fully satisfied the old business and understood it. Okay, so you go back and review. And I don't know who God's talking to, but he's telling me, I'm the Lord thy God that keep the thing. I am the Lord thy God that delivered you, brought you out the house of bondage, healed you from your diabetes, healed you from your cancer, allowed you to live after the breakup, after the fallout. I am that I am that I am. When they said you were blank, 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 and you weren't this, that, and another, and as Marvin Sapp said, you heard, you, you, you talked about the best in me. You talked about the best in you, and everybody said I wouldn't make it. Everybody said I was this. And said, I got a little shana. You, you thought and said the best in me. I'm a shana. And you see that in John when Jesus goes to the woman at the well. All he did was talk about the best in her. And what was the best in her? What was the best in her? There's a lot of things that was the best in her. The church talks about the worst in her. I don't say anything wrong with the girl myself. She all right. What was the best in her? First of all, she was diligent in her purpose. She was going to get the water. I don't think it was, we don't comprehend not having water or water, not having a, 
a dwelling without water, without electricity, without plumbing, without cooking devices and washing clothes and all those things. We don't understand that. But I was in Haiti, a little girl, stand up, Ray Ray. Come up here, Ray Ray. Got healthy, Ray Ray is a strong praise God. But a little girl like this had to walk two miles with four or five gallon, okay, containers of water on her. Had to walk it. Think she might get tired. And when somebody said, I'm the water that if you take, you don't thirst no more. She said, she said Jesus, I give it to me. I need it. I need it. I need it. I need it. I don't have to come out here no more. I love that was the best of her. She was able to be received. She was doing the work of her ministry, taking care of the man that she was living with in the household. It doesn't say how many kids might have been here. If she had five others, she could have had 20 kids. See, see, that's the best in her. All right? And she was receptive to hear what God, what Christ said. So receptive, thank you, sweetie, and so available she was the first person he said that I am the Christ. Because the best in her was that she was going to go downtown and tell everybody, right, about this man who prophesied and told me this, that he was the Christ. So what was the best in her? Everybody, everybody, everybody knew her. Because she had about probably maybe five families and mother-in-laws and sister-in-laws and the girlfriend, the baby daddy, and all this. Everybody knew her. So she was able to perfect her ministry through what she had suffered. And we talk about Hello. It was the best in her. Come on. All right. Now, Elisha starts talking about his personal stuff. We talked about the personal pronouns, right? The, the me, the I, okay? All right? Okay? He starts talking about me. Me, me, me. Me, me, me. Me, me, me. Didn't he take account that it was God who brought him through and allowed him to have such wonderful miracles. Sometimes you forget that you know something? You're trying to do it so much yourself, you forget it was God who caused me to prosper and be in good health. It was God who took great delight in me because I was his servant. It was he that caused me to prosper and have good success. But sometimes you forget. Don't you forget? Sometimes you forget. And when do you forget? When do you forget? When you're tired. When you're tired. When you feel hopeless. And you've done the best you can by X, Y, and Z. And they still don't want to hear. They still don't want to do. You can get what? Tired. But this is a mighty thing. He's, he's, he's a major prophet. What's there between major prophecy and minor prophecy in the Bible? Huh? Yeah, but they still all major. They all major. They all major. Guess what? You're major. You're major. Okay? You can never be minor. You can never be minor. You're going to be major. All right? The man just walked in. He's major. But if he forgets who he is and who made him, he will function like he's a minor. Am I in the right place? What's the, what's the address of this location? <laughs> All right. Let's go. Let's go to fourteen. And he said, I have been very jealous <clears throat> for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, slain thy prophets with the sword. And even I am only left, and they seek to take my, take my life, take, seek my life and take it away. And the Lord said to him, 
Lord said to him, man, you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. You didn't pray enough last night. What did he say? Because in the time of your weakness, what happened? His strength is made what? Perfect. So it's all right to be tired. It's all right to be weak. All right? Because you're still not going to ever be a minor. You're going and always will be a major. Don't forget your major. Come on, somebody. Who's created in the image of God? Do you know somebody? Anybody around you? Show me, show me, show me, show me. Show me, show me somebody that's created in the image of God. Show me. Okay, you and who else? So they're all what? Major. But they might be mi majoring in minor. Let's major in the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, sometimes you start ma ma majoring in minors and minoring in the majors. But your major, no matter how many baby daddies you got or how many um, baby mamas you got, you are what? Major in this kingdom. And the Lord said, I'm never going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. I still got something for you to do. Say, neighbor, tell your neighbor. Neighbor, God got something for you to do. And it is phenomenal. And the best is yet to come. My, my, my. And 15. And the Lord said unto him, Go return thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thy cometh anoint Haziel, to be king over Syria. Hmm. Wow. Now it seems like the prophets anoint the kings. Right? Did he ask him anything about where he had been and all that? Why does he have to ask him when he's omniscient and he was feeding him and ministering to him all the way? Hello? You hear what I'm saying? He was ministering to you all the way. He was there all what? All the time. You thought you was walking and God was carrying us. Mm, my, 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 my. Anybody been there? Because guess what? You see now grace operating. Because, see, grace cannot operate in a place where there's judgment and condemnation. So if grace is talking, grace has to understand because grace is, amen, unmerited favor because you didn't do anything to deserve it. So why should I talk about your frailties? He said, now go anoint somebody king. Yeah, but man, he should have he should have made him go to the altar and say five acts of the apostle. Is that right, sir? Acts of contrition, right. Yeah, acts of contrition. That was on my tongue. Amen. And, and about 15 Hail Marys, right? Amen. And 25 Our Fathers, right? Oh, don't forget the Apostles' Creed. You had to say that at the altar for penance too, right? All right, yeah. Yeah. My, my, my. Ow. Penance has already been satisfied, y'all. Yes. Penance was satisfied where? At the, at the cross. Because everything that was against you was nailed to the cross. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, somebody? Amen. So, grace said, look, like, come on. Wait, 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 wait. Thank you.